1968 was the year that um, Martin Luther was assassinated. A man had yet to land on the moon. A guy called Sir Keith Holyoke was the Prime Minister. He's the guy that developed Kinlock. Um, it was a very long time ago. We'd only just got decimal currency. That's dollars and cents. We used to have pounds and pennies. Um, I was at primary school. <laughs> Wahidi had floundered on the rocks and sank the year. It was an interesting year, many, many, many years ago. Um, so without further ado, this is the last assembly for Mr Drake. He's not going to be a timetable teacher next year. He will be back again. But I think it's very fitting that we give him speaking rights for the last full assembly. Mr Drake. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moyle. Yes, it's true that when I arrived here, as a matter of fact, the first time I was on this stage looking at a school was in October 1967 when I arrived as a trainee teacher for a month and there were 650 students in the school and I didn't speak but I was introduced and I looked out and I saw uh, not quite as much of a sea of faces but a lot of, a lot of students then, including some of your grandparents. Now, and yes, Mr. Moyle was about year four at primary school, although we haven't met. There are several rumours that I'm hearing about me around the school, and I thought I'd better discuss them. And the first one is that I'm retiring, and it's almost true. The second is that I have 110 ties, and that's almost true too. And the third one, that I've only had one car in my life, and that's almost true too. Now, to deal with the first rumour, I came to the school as a a member of staff in 1968 at the beginning of the year. I came to do country service. That meant that some very remote schools you were allowed, if you had done two years at them, your salary could continue and increase. And if you stayed in the city and didn't, your salary did not increase. And this was a country service school. So I came here to do two years. And that was 46 years ago. Now, there were no computers in those days. Not even the principal had a computer. Now, as you know, the, the principal is seriously addicted to YouTube. Um, the nearest McDonald's was in the Tauranga. There was only one radio station in the Taupo called Radio Lakeland, and some of your grandparents were sitting where you are now. Since then, the buildings have almost all changed. The only buildings that are left from when I started are the Boiler House. Some of you may not know where that is. It's the other side of the DNI block. The half of the Nelson block that's, that was Mrs. Gray's room and my room um, down on the library end, uh, and the English block, E block, and the, the body of this hall itself. Everything else has been knocked down and rebuilt. Um, I'm almost retiring. I'm going to come back and I'm going to do some relieving if Mr. Forsyth will let me. And I'm also going to look after the school archives. Now, that's worth a word. The school archives is the school records. And occasionally we get messages, usually from overseas, from ex-students who have lost their reports and things. And you might think that doesn't matter, but they find themselves going for a job, especially in Australia or America, and their new employers, they want to see their school reports from when they were at school, even if they left 20 years ago. Now, so I don't have to work too hard, I advise you to keep your reports. I've got this tin. In this tin are my school reports. Back in the day, you could do a whole year's work and they only gave you one page report, so they all fit. In this tin, there are two university degrees. In this tin are important things like letters from my first girlfriend when I was 16. Then they're all in this tin and I've kept them. And about 10 years ago, I had to prove my qualifications from university and the cards in here did it. Now, you'll need a bit more than a tin now, but you could have a big shoebox, you could cover it red, you could write on it your name, private. You keep your stuff in there and you just make sure you don't lose them as you move from house to house. And then you won't have to have me look you up in the 10 or 15 years if I'm still around to send you all your, your information. So I'm going to continue to look after that. I must say, when I first arrived here, I was, was greeted by uh, the head student, a guy called Ross Smith, and the head girl, a very capable young woman called Ursula Story. 
I heard Ursula's story about 20 years ago. She's a very fine woman these days um, with a lovely husband and six children, so there's a thought. Um, <laughs> now, the second rumour that I've got 111, 110 ties is not quite sure. I've got 111 because yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was, was given the tie I'm wearing today, which is a Māori motive one, and I haven't had a Māori motive one, by a very notable Māori boy in the school. And the thing that really touched me, he tells me that his grandfather gave it to him and he wants me to have it. I really appreciate that. Um, so thank you so much for that. And you will get the contract. And as many people know, on most of my ties, there are contracts to, to teachers and students saying that when I die, they get the tie forever. And so, yes, you will get the contract for that. Um, and yes, Molly and Danny, I know I owe you a contract and we'll fix it next Tuesday. The third rumour is that I'm driving my, my first car. No, not quite true. It's only my second car. I bought it secondhand in 1974. It's 43 years old. I've personally driven it 415,000 kilometres, which is a 12 and a half times around the world equivalent, mostly between my house and school. And in all that time, I've only had one accident when I rolled it going too fast on the metal road, as you do. <laughs> now, when I left school, I was never going to go near a school again. I went to uni for five years. I got two degrees. I decided to try teaching. Now, the interesting thing is, I had a hypothesis, a theory, that if teenagers were cheated with trust and respect, they would show trust and respect in return, because I'd seen some of the teenagers treated quite badly. Now, I have treated the teenagers with the utmost trust and respect ever since I started, and I've got to tell you it worked, and I stayed. When I was a trainee teacher, I went for a month to an Auckland school, a very well thought of Auckland school, and the thing that struck me there is on my last day, there was a student I was going to, to give a book to, and I didn't have time to see them. And I said to a teacher as I was leaving, because I wasn't going to go back, a young teacher, I have to say, and maybe he just hadn't thought it through. And I said, look, I owe this book to this student. Would you make sure that he gets it? And the teacher said, and I'll never forget it. He said, oh, don't worry, he's only a student. And I thought, well, if you think I'm going to run my career thinking that about my students, you're dead wrong. I've done my best never ever to let a student down because it's really important that everyone is respected to the full. Now, I have to tell you, that in life, often a very good big decision is started by a series of good little decisions. Like, if you try always to do your homework, that'll have a very good outcome in the end. You'll do much better than if you don't. And I want to tell you that one of my best small decisions was to bring my lunch to school from home. Because I worked out the other day, or incidentally, I've always bought my lunch. I've never, ever bought lunch in the canteen. Nothing against the canteen, but I've never, ever bought it. And I worked out to my horror at the other day that if I'd spent $3.50, which is the cost of a chicken roll from memory, and our money now on lunch every day for 46 years at the canteen, I would have spent $32,000 at the canteen. Now, I brought, my, I brought my lunch from home, and of course the bread cost us something, and the apple cost us something, but I reckon my lunch has cost $1.80 a day, and that's 16000 So I have saved 16 grand by not buying my lunch at the canteen. <laughs> So that was a small, series of small decisions had a very good outcome. I hugely enjoy classroom teaching, as my classes well know. And I would like to thank you all, not only my classes, but the rest of the school, for your good manners. Now, good manners are hugely important. The good manners, saying please and thank you, greeting people, helping them through doors, carrying things if they've got too much stuff, just being generally pleasant mean that you are treating the other person as significant and important. Now think about it, if someone's rude to you, that puts up a barrier, you feel demeaned. If someone ignores you, there's no relationship built. But if someone's nice to you, it builds a relationship. And you can react in a kindly manner and real communication results. Now, when you relate well to people and you have good manners, it means that we build a structure of people together. Individually, none of us can do very much, but together we can do a great deal. And your good manners and kindness, not just to me, but to the other staff and to each other, 
mean that we build a unity in the school that makes it far more significant than, than just the individual parts. And Mr. Moyles has spoken to you about how many of the ex-students feel about it. Really, it's a bit like a whole lot of bits of steel. They're building a new building, the bits of steel lying on the ground are just individuals, but connect them up and build them and you've got a magnificent building. And the school population is like a magnificent building. And you guys are a magnificent building because of what you do. Your good manners and kindness have encouraged me to stay and enabled me to give of my best, as it enables your other teachers to give of their best. I'd like to thank all my classes this year for their all their um, help to me and their encouragement. Attend ELP 1, attend ELP 2, attend ELP 6, 9 ELP and 9 SS 3. I'd like to thank all my past classes. I did the calculation and there are just under 600 students in this hall that I have taught. And there are 10 other people in this school that I have taught, 10 teachers, going right back to 1968. And in fact, the person who I taught in 1968 in my first third form, I may say, 3X. He was a very nice schoolboy then. He's a very nice grandfather now. Um, I even remember the name of his girlfriend when he was in year 10. And uh, he and I occasionally wonder what's happened to her, and she's now 61, where she is. Um, so thank you to all you guys. You have made my life a pleasure. A lot of work, but a pleasure, and it's very encouraging. I need to just briefly tell you the most embarrassing thing has ever happened to me. Um, in that whole time, and it goes like this. I was at the third form of barbecue. I was eating a sausage, as you do. I was speaking to Bonnie Tai and her mother. Now, Bonnie Tai was a very kind and a straightforward girl, but always, if something needed to be said, she said it. She was rather like Alice Orr, really. And, <laughs> and I noticed that there was something wrong with her mother's eye. And her mother kept pulling at her eye, and I thought, the poor woman, she, she's got an eye infection. Well, the next day, period one, in my room, N15, I had Bonnie's class. So Bonnie sat right at the back. Bonnie came in. She said, right from the back, she said, Mr. Drake, do you know what you did to my mother last night? And I said, I've got no idea. And she said, you spat a piece of sausage into the corner. <laughs> well, what could I say that I was sorry? But when my wife, when my wife heard the story, she thought it was outrageous and she put a rahui on me and I've never been allowed to eat anything at the third form of barbecue at the year <laughs> from that day on to this. Now, I want to say I admire students who try their best, no matter whether they are brainy or not. I never give up on someone and I got a letter 11 years ago that you teach a whole career to get and I want to read you the key paragraph. This is from a girl who was in year 12, and she said, One last thing I want to say is that no matter what I'd done, you always saw the good in me and had faith. A lot of others have gave up, but you never. You're the bomb. And it's thanks to you for me still being at school, so thank you very much, and I hope one day I can return the favour. Now, I was very touched by that, and she is a very successful young woman now in her late 20s. There are people in this hall who I know very well who have gone to AE because of problems in their junior school and they have come back and they are very successful senior students. That gives me almost more pleasure than anyone else to, to know those people and to know what they have done. So well done. So thank you so much to all you students for your manners, for the way that you mostly listen, for your kindness and for your fun. Thank you to the staff who so often see me, um, there are many excellent teachers, always ready to help and to advise. And thanks to my wife, who so often sees me go off to school and come back tired, but knows that my students are the most important thing for me at my work and encourages and supports me. I've put my absolute best into helping all my students and to teaching as well as I can. And to helping them develop their personalities, their strengths and abilities. I expect you all to continue to put your absolute best in continuing to develop yourselves. You can all be winners, and by winners I mean you can all be kind, you can all be responsible, you can all be compassionate, and many of you are. You can all be honest, you can be respectful, you can be obedient, you can be hardworking. 
And I expect you all to have fun, but not at others' expense and not at the expense of others' learning. When you are like that, you strengthen everyone, not just yourself, and you help make the society that you are in a better place. Now, I've decided to stop being on the timetable at the end of this year, just because I'm 69, I'll be 70 next year, and I think it's probably time I stopped. But when I look at the younger teachers that are coming on and their abilities and their skill, I think that I can well move on and let them carry on. Just to pick a few at random, when I, pe when I look at people like Mr. Carey, Mrs. Milne, Ms. Campbell, Mr. Gregory, Mr. Forrest, um, there's really, there's nothing that I can do that they can't do. They are magnificent. I'm very proud to have been a Nui teacher, just like you are very proud to be Nui um, students. I have got a medium term aim, and that is the 75th anniversary of this school is going to be in the year 2035. Now, people um, like Lauren will be 40 years old. Um, and people like uh, Corbin Sim from Year 9 will be 36 years old. <laughs> I, if I can make it, will be 91 years old. I can do my best to be there. And I expect you to do your best to be there too. So until then, kia kaha, um, stay strong. I've never had a haka in my honour in my life and it occurs to me this week if it's good enough for Beyonce, it's good enough for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr Drake. Can we please give him one last hand? Who can stand?